for a warm welcome to Mark Hartley.
your luck and repay the favor? <laughs> Right hand, your right hand, I want you to put your palm up like this. With your left hand, I want you to put your pointer finger in the air. Pointer finger in the air. Now, take your pointer finger and put it in the palm of the person next to you. Right, don't be twisting it like that. <laughs> Some of you moaned and groaned. Some of you got up and said, Then I asked. 
asked you to turn 90 degrees to your right. Some of you spinning in circles. Now before that, I asked, who here is major in or likes math or science? Some of you, maybe, you know, like a fourth of you put your hands up. You remember that? Okay. But you should have seen the people's faces that didn't raise their hand.
do your hair, do your makeup, and that's just the guys. <laughs> we, 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 you have taken advantage of an unbelievable opportunity. Now this is all day today, all day tomorrow. I am going to challenge you to be focused every presenter, every speaker, everybody that comes through here. Don't just hear their words. Inculcate it into the depths of your soul. Take this stuff in. You see, I could be anywhere right now. As a matter of fact, I'm in the middle of a conference. There's a conference going on, going on down in San Diego that I'm a part of, that I ditched this morning to come and speak to you. Because I made an oath to myself way back when. Because my, my skill is speaking. And I said, I'm never going to give up an opportunity to speak in front of people. I don't know where that could lead. I don't know where, more importantly, I don't know who I could inspire. So I was up at 4 in the morning, hopped in a car, drove up the 5 freeway to get here to be with you today. Because I care. Because I'm trying to live out my passion. And I need you to be passionate about your goals. Are you willing to get up at 4 in the morning to do your passion? You see, and, and if the answer is, I don't even know what my passion is, then that's where we need to start. That's the foundation. Because, see, if, if we're going to a job just for the paycheck, we're in the wrong business. You see, you know you're doing the right thing when I will do it for free. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'll figure out how to get food and, you know, gas money and put, put a roof over. I'll figure that out. But this is my passion. I'll do it for free. The great thing is, when you do something that you're passionate about, you're good at it, and you're willing to do it for free, people will pay you to do it. They'll pay you to do it. So that's your goal in life. Figure out your passion. And don't worry about where the money's going to come from. When you're the best in the world at something, people will pay you. Okay? The money will come. The money will come. See, then I asked you to gently massage the person in front of you. Remember that? That felt kind of good. Somebody like, can you get some lotion on your hand? Can you touch it on my hand? Just kind of crazy. Success principle that we all need to understand. There is no success unless it involves other people. We've got to get outside of our comfort zone and get involved in the lives of other people if success is ever possible. Success does not happen in a silo. It doesn't happen in a phone book. It doesn't happen just you as an individual. The only success in life is when we help out other people. You see, there's a guy by the name of Zig Ziglar who used to say, if you help out enough other people and get what they want, whatever you want. Help other people out. Get people where they need to go and make sure, make sure that you're doing it for the right reason. You're not doing it for yourself, but understand, it's going to come back around. What you plant today, you're going to reap tomorrow. Okay? So, so you don't have to worry about it. You just continue to do the good work that you're doing and great things are going to happen. So listen, passion is what this is all about. We've got to be passionate about our lives. So let me wrap up with this story. Uh, it's a story about a boxer. Has anybody heard of the boxer Muhammad Ali? Does anybody remember his name before it was Muhammad Ali? Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay. Cassius Clay. As a matter of fact, his real name is Cassius Marcellus Clay. Okay? Now you would understand why a guy would turn to boxing with a name like that. People are kicking sand on him in a sandbox. Cassius is a fascist. You know, I don't think they were saying that. I'm just making something. But, but listen, this is one of the greatest athletes of our day. Unbelievable. Now, back in the year 2012, we had the Summer Olympics going on, and it, great things were happening. And I'm watching this, and Bob Costas, the, the host, is kind of going through this top 10 list of the greatest athletes of the last century. From 1900 all the way to 2000, who were the greatest athletes? And the countdown happened, it was pretty cool. And, you know, Michael Jordan was on that list, and Tiger Woods is on this list. But at number one, was Muhammad Ali. And see, I'm not a big boxing fan. I'm not into violence or anything like that. But what I am into is excellence. I like studying people that are the best of the best in their field. So I wanted to do my research. And who was this guy, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali? What was, what was he all about? So I did, did my research. Here's what I found out. Cassius Clay, as an amateur, had won 100 bouts, only lost five. He won the Olympic gold medal in the heavyweight division for boxing, representing the United States of America in 1960. On October 20th, 1960, he turned pro, had his first professional bout. He knocked out a guy by the name of Tony Hunsaker in the fifth round. Well, as the story goes, after the fight is over, he 
he's in the dressing room and reporters are all around, like the pop rocks, just all around. You know, cameras are flashing off in his face. Reporters are writing down everything he has to say. They're asking questions, you know. Uh, Champ, you got some good hits on you, how do you feel? Champ, what's your next fight gonna be? Champ, what are you gonna go for the title? Cassius Clay, politely, cordially, answers all of the questions. Reporters feel like they got their answers for the, the, the next day's paper and everything. They're packing their stuff up in their pads and papers away, tucking their cameras into their bags. And, and the crowd starts to disperse. Until one young reporter in the back says, Mr. Clay, Mr. Clay, I've got a question. He said, yeah, whatever you want. I'm an open book. He said, Cassius, where did you get your passion for boxing? Cassius Clay says, come here, son. I want you to see the whites of my eyes while I tell you this story. He says, I was kind of raised on the wrong side of the tracks, if you know what I mean. Like, both of my parents worked, they worked hard, but we barely had enough money to put food on the table week after week after week. Somehow, some way, though, for my sixth birthday, my mom and dad were able to get me a brand new red bicycle. Oh, it was beautiful. Cherry apple red, had little tassels that came down, a little bell on it. Everybody in the neighborhood knew me because I rode my red bike. And there goes Cassius, he's going to deliver his newspapers. There, there goes Cassius to his first grade class. There, there goes Cassius to go to his grocery store job. Look at Cassius going on his red bike. There he goes. One day, Cassius says, he got up to go to you know, school and went down the stoop to unlock his bike. And his bike was stolen. Somebody stole his bike. He ditched class that day. He, he ran down alleyways. He, he jumped into dumpsters. He knocked on the storefronts. Has anybody seen my bike? He asked. He said, I never did find that bike. At that point, Cash Clay motions over to his trainer. Can you get my gloves off of the tape? And the reporter's looking bewildered at Cash Clay. <coughs> Cash, I asked you a question about boxing. You tell me some stupid story about a bike. Cassius Clay throws the trainer to the side. He grabs the reporter, pulls him nose to nose. Sweat is dripping from Cassius Clay's nose onto the reporter's nose. Said, listen, man, every time I put these gloves on, every time I step into that ring, I look across my opponent and I say, hey, that's the dude that stole my bike, and I go get him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, somebody has stolen something from us. In most cases, it's our dreams. In most cases, it's the ability to think big. You've got greatness inside of you. You've got something special inside of you. Somebody has stolen something from you, like they did Cassius Clay, and it's time to take it back. It's time to get passionate about your life. It's time to figure out exactly what your strengths are. It's time to make sure that you understand that you are the chosen one. We need you. We can't do it without you. You've got something special that nobody in this world has and it needs to flourish and rise to the top. My name is Mark Hurt. It's been a good share.